Welcome to the Sampling Organically course. In this first lesson, we are going to do a basic overview of different recording devices in order for us to be able to record our own audio samples, and also a general overview of the Ableton Live DAW, which we'll be using for this course. If you prefer using another DAW, all of these same techniques and the creative process can be applied. I'm going to be opening the Ableton Live software. So as you can see, this is called the session view of Ableton, and it is very similar to what most DAWs look like. This is like a timeline kind of screen where as you have audio playing, you can see that this line is moving in accordance to the time. The time is at the bottom of the screen. When I go to the other view of Ableton, this is called Clip Session View, it works through scenes. So these numbers over here represent different scenes. And it's not necessarily based on time. Everything here can be a constant loop. And also a lot of people use it just to experiment and create before arranging the track. So I'm going to quickly go over the difference of audio and MIDI for who doesn't understand. What is audio? Audio could be the recording of an instrument. It could be the recording of a vocal. It could be the recording of a vinyl record or an analog tape. It could be audio that already exists, so like a song you have in your computer or some other type of recording that then you're importing into the program. Whereas MIDI is, it sounds like audio, but it's not actually audio yet to the computer. It's a totally digital instrument, so you can basically write music and it's technically empty audio um, composition, and you can be changing the digital instruments. So when you're happy with what you've created, then that can become audio afterwards. I'm going to quickly go also go over the steps to producing a track because I think it's important that we talk about this now before diving into learning anything so you can understand where we're at on the creative process of the track production. So we're going to be just getting our audio samples ready. We're going to be recording them. We're going to be importing them. We're going to be editing them, etc basically to prepare to then create the track. After we would have all of the audio that we want ready, or at least to start uh, experimenting and creating, then we'd be already producing the track, getting the track all ready, um, adding a beat to it, adding different parts, creating an arrangement. When we have our track ready, then we're gonna be going through and making any final adjustments, editing, the audio, if something is louder than, than the other, then the track will be ready for mixing, which usually is outsourced. I usually hire a mixing engineer or sound engineer to, to help me mix my track professionally. Um, although I do, I have studied mixing, I do know about mixing, that's pretty good for the pre-mixing stage. It's good to have like a second opinion or even a third opinion uh, to help you get your track ready, all of the channels, the frequencies, and the EQs aligned. And then once the track is professionally mixed, it's ready to be mastered. Sometimes the mixing engineer also specializes in max mastering, and then you can do a package to, for them to do both services. Sometimes you have to hire a separate max mastering engineer. It really depends on what type of sound you're working with. Something I recommend is always hiring an engineer that has worked with this type of music that you're trying to create because it's at the end of the day, they're going to understand the sounds that you're working with and it's going to sound better. So the processes of creation, we can create over an idea that already exists. Editing a song, remixing a song, or doing a mashup, or field recordings. We can also compose a new idea just by like expressing. In this course, we're going to be focusing on field recordings to get organic sounds from our environment to enhance the track we're going to create. I want to show different 
types of recording devices that we can use to do that. It really depends, are we recording indoors or outdoors? If we're recording indoors, then we can use a professional microphone with an interface with our computer. Typically for like a room that is not acoustically set up for recording, I recommend using a dynamic mic. This is the Shorf SM57, especially if you wanna record something like directly in the microphone. As you can see the, the recording part of this mic is tiny and you would have to record kind of directly in this area of it to get a really good sound. I recommend this for rooms that are not set up acoustically because it's not gonna pick up the sound of the room. It's gonna pick up the sound that you're directing on the microphone. If you have an acoustically set up room for recording, like a proper studio, um, or there's a material that it just, the room sounds really good, you're gonna wanna use a condenser mic because as you can see, this type of mic is designed to pick up basically 360 degrees. So you're gonna be picking up like the whole sound around you. Um, the next version of the Shure SM57 is SM58, which is different. It's also a dynamic mic, but as you can see, it's gonna be picking up a little more of the sound than this one. This, these types of mics, you probably recognize because most people use mics like this for live performing. As it's a dynamic mic, it'll be a little different than using something like this on a stage because this type of mic is gonna pick up more of the, the whole stage sound, whereas this is gonna be picking up the sounds that are directly going into the mic. I'm gonna be recording field recordings outdoors as well as indoors. For outdoors, it's not very convenient for me to bring the mic, the interface and the computer unless I have a place to set up, like a stable fixed location, like in a backyard or something like that. But if I'm going on the street here in New York, um, the most convenient recording device I can use is something like the Zoom H6 field recorder. Um, this recording device, I have two options actually. Um, this is a dynamic type of mic and this is a condenser type of mic. As you can see, there are many versions of what I just showed you. And I can easily switch from the top depending on the sound and the, and the, and the environment that I'm in. So this mic, it works on battery power and a memory card. So I don't need a computer to operate it. And there are inputs for channels that I can actually hook up an instrument or I can hook up to a mixer, for example, recording a DJ set. Um, and it's very convenient, it's very light. It fits in my pocket. So I can bring it out to the streets or to the beach or somewhere where I'd like to record the external audio and get some field recordings. All right, that's all the equipment you're gonna need for recording in different environments. And for the next lesson, we're gonna be getting creative with the indoor environment, with outdoors, and also going over di different techniques for listening and recording.